Look, I've seen the comments. I've seen the videos. I've heard it a million times. NVIDIA is segmenting the market with ray tracing and real-time ray tracing with those who have to buy the RTX cards that are $350 and up if they want it. Otherwise, they're left out in the cold. And why would any developers want to create this new thing for cards that are this much of the market? Well, as of today, NVIDIA has announced that they are extending DXR support through all of their GTX G or GeForce GTX cards from the 1060 six gigabyte and up through Pascal line, as well as the GTX 16 series Turing based GPUs. So that kind of wraps up the cards that are supported. So the GTX 1060 six gigabyte, GTX 1070, GTX 1070 Ti, 1080, 1080 Ti, up Titan, X, P, you know, all of those, and the GTX 1660 and 1660 Ti. So that kind of wraps up the additional cards that are now wrapped up in the full DXR performance or compatible section. Now, does this mean all of the RTX functions are moving over? So you get DLSS, uh, real-time ray tracing. No, you do not get DLSS. DLSS is still reserved for those tensor cores, and there's gonna be the crowd out there that goes, okay, you can just do screen scaling. That's fine, that's an argument for a different day. But the point here being, according to NVIDIA, if they brought the DLSS functions over, it would actually slow the cards down instead of beef them up or speed them up rather. Um, but DXR being DirectX ray tracing, so RTX is built on top of that kind of thing that remember RTX is like the total suite package for the RTX functions, but DXR is DirectX ray tracing. So if the card is DX12 compliant and can support the feature set, then it will be supported. Now, I'm pretty sure they had to cut it off somewhere. The 1063 gig is probably just incapable of running it at any type of acceptable usage. Now that moves us into the next point of topic, performance expectations when running DXR with the Pascal line of cards and then the GTX Touring cards. So will it be as good, that's debatable for, for you, know, you guys, but it will it be as good as the RTX cards? No, there's simply no way that it's gonna be as good because those RT cores do function when it comes to ray trace features. So the cards will support it and you can run it, but don't expect really, really good performance. In fact, I'm really concerned almost with what kind of performance we could see. I really can't wait to test this out for myself and I'm definitely looking forward to doing that next month. But one of the key things, like so we're gonna go through three of the games that were mentioned in the presentation. Uh, Battlefield Five is probably the best, you know, kind of explanation of how they said this would work best for the GTX cards. So the real-time ray trace or the hybrid rendering, so the real-time ray reflections that are going on in Battlefield Five would be a good fit for something like this because there are levels of selection. So you can go ultra, high, medium, and low to tailor the intensity of the real-time ray tracing. So cards that could support it could probably turn it on and run it at low and still get the features of the real-time ray tracing, but with less impact than if you had tried to do more. Again, it's still gonna be real interesting to see just how it performs, and right now I'm really regretting not having a 1080 Ti in hand. But games like Metro Exodus, where it's global illumination, it's either on or it's off, those kind of games don't really expect those to be a playable experience, in my opinion. It's gonna be the hardest one to run where it's full-blown like that. There's no degrees of global illuminations. It's full or none. And then Shadow of the Tomb Raider was brought up. It was also brought up that it's coming soon. Although that game, it's, I would like to play it again a little bit, maybe a game plus with the real-time shadows enabled just to see kind of how that matters. But they just say it'll, it'll fluctuate in there depending on how heavy the shadows are, how what level you have it set to. So it's gonna be very game by game kind of thing. But what does this mean for the market as a whole? Well, what it means is all of a sudden those developers no longer have the small group of people that can utilize real-time ray tracing and DXR, but they have a huge, huge section of the market that are already running real-time ray tracing, as well as, and I recall when Radeon introduced 
uh, VSR and NVIDIA had DSR, one of the things for me was if you were running a 1080p monitor or a 1440p, you could upscale the resolution to 4K and kind of see how your system handled 4K or even 1080p to 1440 before you invested in that next tier monitor. This could give you a chance to see real-time ray tracing reflections in games, global illumination, even though it won't be a, a very good performance, um, at least you can see if it's really something for you because again, videos and pictures only tell so much of a story. A lot of it has to do with experience. So that's where I think it'll give developers an incentive to put these kind of features into their games. And if more people can run it, then they're more likely to try it out. Speaking of more people running it, what is about somebody like Radeon in this? See, we just saw a demo with Neon Noir running with real-time reflections on a Radeon RX Vega 56, but Radeon still has yet to release a public driver that will support DXR. This might be a catalyst that convinces them to do so because they do have really high compute performance video cards. and. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. The ball's kind of in their court at this point because it's not locked down to RTX functions for the real-time ray tracing, reflections or global animation or shadows. So it'll be cool to see what happens in the market as a whole. This is a good move overall. There's really nothing bad here. And if you're looking for that driver today, it's too soon. It's gonna be dropping next month in April of 2019. But wanted to share with you guys kind of what information we have right now and get your take on it, which would be really cool down in the comment section below. This has been Keith with WCCF Tech TV. Make that you're, that you're subscribed and hit that notification bell so that we don't miss you in the next one.